G'day everyone, my name's Matt and welcome back to The Fire Show. In this episode, we're going to be talking about smoke and how as firefighters it can affect our health. We're also going to be talking about how we can minimise the impact of smoke on our health by employing a few different pieces of personal protection equipment. Now, smoke itself can come from a number of different sources, being structure fires, car fires, bushfires and all kinds of things. But they all have a couple of things in common. In fact, we can actually break them down into two separate categories. We can have the particulate matter and the chemicals that are coming out of the smoke. And we're going to talk about each one of those today and the effect that they can have on our health. We're going to start with particulate matter. Now, when we're talking about particulate matter, we're talking about the solids and the liquids of our three states of matter. And the third is obviously our gases. Now, particulate matter is usually broken down into two separate categories, being PM10 and PM2.5. Now, PM10 stands for smoke particles with a diameter of 10 micrometers or less. And PM2.5 stands for particles with a diameter of 2.5 micrometers or less. And here's PM2.5 and PM10 in comparison to a human hair. And as you can see, they really are very small particles. Now, the definition for PM10 is particles that are small enough to pass through the throat and nose and into the lungs. While PM2.5 are particles that are so small, they can get into the lungs and even into the bloodstream because they are so small. And once inhaled, these particles can affect the heart and lungs and cause serious health effects. Now, there are many health effects from exposure to particulate matter, and numerous studies have showed associations between exposure to particles and increased hospital admissions, as well as death from heart or lung diseases. And there is currently no evidence of a threshold below which exposure to particulate matter does not cause any health effects. And health effects can occur after both short and long-term exposure to particulate matter. Now, short-term exposure, which is defined as hours to days, can lead to Irritated eyes, nose and throat, worsening asthma and lung diseases, heart attacks in people with heart disease, increases in hospital admissions and even premature death due to diseases of the respiratory and cardiovascular systems. And long-term exposure can result in reduced lung function, development of cardiovascular and respiratory diseases, an increased rate of disease progression and a reduction in life expectancy. And if we move on to the chemicals that are in the smoke, there are literally thousands of combinations of chemicals that are out there, which we may find in different types of fires, whether it be a vegetation fire or a car fire or a structure fire, they are all very different. However, they do have some things in common. In fact, we can break them down into two main groups, being asphyxiants or irritants. And a really common example of an asphyxiant is carbon monoxide. Now, carbon monoxide is hundreds of times more effective at attaching to our blood than oxygen is. And the combination of carbon monoxide and our blood is called carboxyhemoglobin. And an accumulation of carboxyhemoglobin in our blood can lead to tiredness, dizziness, unconsciousness, and even death in more advanced cases. And it can take many hours for our body to remove carboxyhemoglobin from our blood. However, oxygen therapy can be beneficial in a patient's recovery. And an example of a very common irritant is formaldehyde. Now, some common formaldehyde effects are the irritation of the eyes, nose, and throat. It may cause itching or stinging sensation and watery eyes and runny noses. And it's also recognized as a carcinogen that is associated with nasal cancers. Now, if we were to move on to dermal exposure, which is the exposure to our skin, studies have shown that contaminants can penetrate through our turnout gear and onto our skin. So in 2011, the Queensland Fire Service conducted a study on firefighter dermal exposure to smoke. And they found that we should avoid or minimise exposure to smoke, always wear self-contained breathing apparatus when it's required. Where possible, we should remain below the neutral plane or behind a water spray. And firefighters should shower as soon as possible after a fire to remove contaminants from their skin. It's also important to note that it's really important that we have our gear cleaned after we've been into a fire to remove those contaminants from our gear. Now, you might be starting to think, how on earth am I going to keep myself safe at these fires? How am I going to protect my respiratory system while I actually need to work in the smoke and fight the fire? And thankfully, there are a number of ways that we can use to actually protect our respiratory systems while we fight the fire. The first of which is just the old faithful P2 dust mask. Now, these masks are specifically designed to protect us from the particulate matter. So they're really just filtering out all those particles that are going to do us harm. 
It's important to note that they don't actually filter out the gases, so they're not suitable for working in really heavy smoke, because in the really heavy smoke we can expect to see that those formaldehyde and carbon monoxide levels are going to start to creep higher. So in those cases we really should be looking at higher levels of respiratory protection. A higher level of respiratory protection is a respirator. Now these will actually protect us from the particulate matter, but they'll also protect us from some selected chemicals. So it really depends on what the actual canisters are rated for, but they will protect us from some chemicals and filter them out as well. Now they're not perfect and they're definitely not designed for being used in heavy smoke, but they do provide a higher level of respiratory protection than the P2 dust mask. And of course, if we're going to be working in heavy smoke, for instance, at a structure fire or near a car fire or that kind of thing, we really need to be wearing BA because BA is the only thing that provides us with a fresh atmosphere that we can breathe that's free of any particulates or chemicals. So now we've seen that it's not just the toxic chemicals in the smoke that can be harmful for us, but also the particulate matter as well. So it's really important that any time we actually have to be working in smoke, we're wearing the appropriate PPC to keep ourselves safe. And it also begs the question, do we need to be in the smoke at all? Is there anything to gain by us being exposed to this smoke? Or can we actually perform the duties by staying out of it? Now, as we know, that's not always possible on the fire ground, and sometimes we just have to work in the smoke. So when we do, we just need to make sure we're wearing the appropriate PPC to keep ourselves safe. All right, well, that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.